Hello and welcome to the tutorial on configuring a Laravel project with Firebase for building an authentication flow. In this video, I'll guide you through the process of integrating Firebase authentication into your Laravel application. First, make sure you have XAMPP and Composer installed on your system. If you don't have these tools installed, you can go to the link in the description below to download and install them. Now that you have XAMPP and Composer installed on your system, you're ready to proceed with configuring Firebase in your Laravel project. Open your Laravel project in your preferred code editor. I am using Visual Studio Code. I have already installed the required package as you can see it in composer.json file. You can use the following command to install the package on your Laravel project. As I have already installed it, I'll just run composer install command. To solve this issue of install or enable PHP Sodium extension, just follow the steps as shown in the video. Now, let's run the Composer install command again. The Sodium extension error has been resolved, but we got a new error that is the zip extension and unzip command are both missing, skipping. Follow the steps on video to solve this issue. Now, let's run the Composer install command again. Since the packages are being installed, let us proceed to creating a Firebase project. Go to the Firebase console and click on Create a Project. Provide a name for your project and follow the on-screen instructions to set it up. After creating your Firebase project, you need to generate a new private key file. Go to Project Settings and navigate to the Service Accounts tab. Click on Create Service Account. Wait for a while and then click on Generate New Private Key and save the downloaded JSON file to your Laravel project.
The content of the downloaded JSON file has been saved in a file named Firebase underscore credentials dot JSON, which is located in resources slash credentials. Now, run the following command from your terminal in the root directory of your Laravel project. This will publish and create the firebase.php configuration file to the config directory of our Laravel project. Follow the steps to configure the Firebase credentials on the project. Now, let's move on to configuring Laravel to use Firebase for authentication. First, we need to enable the authentication service in the Firebase console. For this, follow the on-screen instructions to set it up. Now, let's run the project using php artisan serve command. When registering a user, we get an error which is because of the wrong configuration provided for MySQL connection. So, let's resolve this issue. As I have not installed MySQL on my system, I will be using XAMPP for it. After setting up the MySQL database configuration, run the php artisan migrate command to generate tables on our database. Now, let's rerun the project and try registering a new user on our system. The user has been registered successfully using Firebase Authentication Service. Now, let's take a closer look at the code for the register controller in our application. Here, we have imported the Firebase facade and other necessary dependencies. In the controller's constructor, we initialize a private property called Firebase Auth by assigning it the Auth method from the Firebase facade. This gives us access to the Firebase authentication functionality. The index method returns a view called register, which will be responsible for displaying the user registration form. Now, let's focus on the register method. First, we validate the request data using Laravel's validation functionality. We ensure that the email field is required, must be a valid email address, and should be unique in the user's table. Additionally, the password field is required and must have a minimum length of six characters. If the validation passes, we retrieve the email and password values from the request inputs. 
Next, we use the create user with email and password method provided by the Firebase Auth object to create a new user in Firebase Authentication using the provided email and password. If the user is successfully created in Firebase Authentication, we flash a success message to the session, indicating that the registration was successful. If an exception occurs, such as a network error or an invalid email format, we catch the exception and flash an error message to the session, informing the user that the registration failed. Now, let's try and log in the registered user to our application from login page. The user is successfully logged in to our application. Now, let's continue with the login controller code, which handles user login and logout functionality. The login controller class, like the register controller, imports the necessary dependencies, including the Firebase facade. The index method in this controller simply returns the login view, responsible for displaying the user login form. Now, let's focus on the login method. First, we validate the login form data using Laravel's validation functionality. The email field is required and must be a valid email address, while the password field is also required. After validating the form data, we proceed to authenticate the user with Firebase using the sign in with email and password method provided by the Firebase auth object. We pass the email and password provided by the user as arguments. The sign in with email and password method returns a sign in result object, which contains information about the user's authentication status and additional data. In the next lines, we extract the user's name from the sign in result object by accessing the data property. Finally, we return the home view, passing the user's name as data. This view can now display personalized content for the authenticated user. Now, let's try and log out the user from our system. The logout method in the login controller is responsible for logging out the currently authenticated user and redirecting them to the registration page. Congratulations! You've successfully configured your Laravel project with Firebase for an authentication flow. Thank you for watching this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more tutorials. Happy coding!